guys, Steve here with Belt of Truth Ministries. I'm on the line with John Snyder. John is the founder of Mighty Man Ministries. John, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Steve. Thanks for having me today. Yeah. So, what's the uh, if you could give one piece of advice to a guy struggling with porn addiction, what would you say? Okay. Well, you've prepped me nicely on the question, so uh, but I wouldn't have needed to think long and hard about it at all. Um, I think the number one thing that that most guys and actually most Christians, uh, you know, this is a this is a broader issue than even just porn addiction, but um, but certainly all the guys that come to our ministry, um, I think the number one thing that that keeps guys uh, tripped up over and over again is just not being in right relationship with God as it relates to um, how they respond to a fall and how they are um, and how they are connecting with God in, in order to receive what they need from him in order to get the heart healed and the wounds healed. So um, I, I can unpack that a little bit. Um, I know that we've got a few minutes, but uh, you know, do you have any questions before we kind of like go into to expanding on that a little bit? Uh, no, why don't yeah? Why don't you unpack that? I think that I think that would yeah. be good for people to hear kind of some details on that. Yeah, good. Okay, so you know, <laughs> um, the Bible says that there's a right way and a wrong way to repent. Uh, not a lot of people realize that. Uh, in Second Corinthians chapter seven, it says that there is uh, worldly sorrow that leads to death, but godly sorrow. Uh, creates zeal, <laughs> indignation, vehement desire, no regrets, all these very healthy emotional fruits that should be present when we repent. So the way that you can judge whether you're repenting properly in a godly fashion or whether you're stuck in this whole worldly sorrow thing is immediately after you fall, what do you do? Do you feel like you have a desire to run right to God? Do you feel like a fall actually improves your relationship with God? And I can get into that in a minute. Um, what I find that most guys uh, experience is the, is the opposite of that. After a fall, you get into this like, I can't believe I did that. I'm such an idiot. You know, I am just so dirty. I'm like the scum that dirt washes off of itself. Um, you know, so there, you know, there's all this self beratement. Uh, there's all this shame and people feel like it's driven a wedge between them and God. Um, I believe the statistic is something like 92% of Christian men, when they, when they were asked if they feel like pornography affects their relationship with God, the answer is yes. And that shows that at least 92%, and in my experience it's more, um, at least 92% of guys are responding to God out of the old man rather than responding out of who they are in Christ. And the reason that's such a big deal is because you literally can't get out of this and God doesn't give you help to get out of this until you're relating to him properly because it, it shows that there's a few things happening in your heart. It shows that you are trusting in your performance to make you acceptable to God more than you're trusting in what Christ has already performed to make you acceptable to God. That is worse in God's eyes than you struggling with porn. It, it shows that you, um, you know, you have a worth that's based in works. And God says, no, I, I want you to come to know that your worth is, is based in something far deeper than that. Um, so it's, it's all about Jesus Christ and your dirt doesn't make his righteousness dirty. Um, so, you know, that, so I always tell guys when they come to our ministry, I said, if you are upset with you, when you fail, it was your strength that you were relying on and not Christ's strength for you. You know, so the Bible talks about, you know, how do we actually overcome sin? You know, well, the Bible says in 1 John uh, 2, 5, it says, um, if anyone is able to keep his word, truly the love of God has been perfected in him. Uh, and so, you know, we, we tend to think, you know, I've got to clean up my act. i got to get it all right. And then I can come to God. He says, no, no, it's, it's the exact opposite of that. He says, if you run to me, then I can give you what you need in your heart that's, gonna, that's going to give you the healing of the heart wound that took you down that path in the first place. It's going to give you the love and acceptance that you need for that love to go deep. So that, like the, the Bible says, if you can keep his word, the love of God is perfected in you. That's what we should be going after. Um, and so when we, when we blow it, 
you know, uh, if I can take just just one more minute, kind of the the process that I've gone through in my life. You know, at first it's going to take some rehearsing for the guys who who are out there because it's it's completely foreign because most of us have just been immersed in this whole uh, you feel unapproachable with God, uh, you know, until you clean up your act, and that's completely backwards. So what what I've done is I, I've got kind of a bunch of life scriptures that I just kind of jotted down so I, I remember them um, for, for this interview but but it creates a dialogue that that I started to rehearse with God you know so when I would feel dirty or when I would feel unacceptable or whatever the case may be I would I, I would have these things that I would talk about with God you know I was reminding God of what his word says but really I'm reminding my own soul so that I don't go down that that path again you know, one of them, uh, you know, I love in Hebrews uh, 7.25, if anybody wants to look it up, it says that we have this high priest who is able to sympathize with us in our weakness so that we can come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in time of need. And it says that uh, he always lives to make intercession for his, for his saints. And so that means at our dirtiest, right after we messed up, if we could run into heaven, what we would see is Jesus interceding for us, doing the same thing he did on the cross. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He has the sympathy for us. So I would say things like, Jesus, right now, even though I feel like I just blew it so bad, you're interceding for me. I would do other things like um, uh, in some of the verses that just blow my mind is John 17, 23 and John 15, 9. That's when Jesus is talking to the disciples. And he says, Father, help them to know that as you have loved me, so I love them. So Jesus loves us as much as the Father loves Jesus. That's crazy to me. Um, and then he also says in 17, 23, he says, I pray that they would come to know and understand that as you love me, you also love them. So the Father loves us as much as he loves Jesus. So I would, I would include that in my dialogue with God. I would say, God, you are radically in love with me. You love me as much as you love your perfect son, Jesus. Awesome stuff. Um, you die for me all over again if it were even possible. That comes right out of Romans 5, 8, and 9. It says, you know, he died for, for sinners. How much more than those who are, who are saved? Um, you know, Paul said when he's struggling with sin, he says, that's no longer me who sins. That's sin dwelling in me. So I, I would say things like, that's not the real me. Uh, that was just some dead guy. <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, I am the righteousness of Christ. Not I have the righteousness of Christ, because that might say it can come and go. But the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says that we have become the righteousness of Christ. So just like, you know, if you think, would Jesus have any shame coming before the Father? Would he have any hesitation asking the Father for something? No. And he would have this full confidence that he can receive from God. So I would come with that same confidence and I would say, God, there is nothing standing between you and me because I am the very righteousness of Christ. I have as much right to be in your presence as he does, even at my worst. So this is some of the dialogue that, that I developed with God. You know, and, and I allowed that so that if I were to fall, I would get up, I would run to God right away rather than go into hiding, rather than go into that downward spiral for a while. I would run and, and fall forward, if you will, and say, God, you love me. You're radically in love with me. I have as much right to talk to you now as Jesus does. You know, and just go through these things that the Bible said to me until I had this uh, you know, and at first it's like, man, do I even believe that? No. But as you rehearse what the Bible says about you, it becomes part of who you are. Mm -hmm. And that puts you in the place, in right relationship with God, so that you can receive everything that you need to overcome. And it's all about Him anyway. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. But it's by God's Spirit. If we walk in the Spirit, we don't carry out the desires of the flesh. So this is so foundational to being able to walk in the Spirit and to, and to have the access to the Father that we need to heal the heart, to overcome the sin. And if you don't have this right relationship with God, you don't have any of the tools spiritually that you need in order to overcome. So that's why I think it's the, the first and most fundamental thing that I would tell anybody struggling. You need to be in right relationship with God. You need to be operating out of this new man uh, and, and relating to God on, on that level so that you can receive what you need to get over uh, the sins that are, are ensnaring you. Yeah, that's you're telling my story, man. <laughs> that was uh, one one of the first major turning points in in my recovery journey was 
exactly what you talked about there. I, for years, every time I sinned, it was, you know, I felt like I had to hide from God. I had to clean myself yeah. up before he would accept me. I had all this yeah. shame and guilt would come in. And it wasn't until I realized, like, those verses that you shared, those were the same verses, you know, uh, come to the mm-hmm. throne of grace in my time of deepest need. Well, when is my time of deepest yeah. need? Right. You know, for me, it was when I just looked at porn. And, uh, yeah. you know, so so realizing that God loved me in that moment. And so That's then right. what happened is instead of responding with shame, I would start, like, every time I fell, I would start responding, you know, Lord, thank you that this doesn't define me. Thank you that Jesus paid for this. Thank yes. you that that I am forgiven for this sin and, and, you know, this doesn't separate me from you. And I would start praying yeah. those verses. And, and like you said, it's, it's crazy. It's like it's almost as if your sin starts drawing you closer to God. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's exactly and, uh, it. You know, you know I, was, I, 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 you, just, you just hit the nail on the head and you got to re- repeat that for the guys. If your sin is driving you away from God, your, your whole paradigm needs to flip upside down. Your sin needs to drive you into God's arms. Mm-hmm. And when, when that's happening, then you're in right relationship with God. So good, Stephen. Yeah, well, hey, thanks for sharing all that. Uh, John, tell people where they can find out more about your ministry and what you're doing and all that. Okay, uh, check out MightyManMinistries.com for more about uh, us. There's all kinds of great resources on there. Uh, and the Mighty Man Manual and the uh, the workbook, if you want to do it with your small group at your church or whatever, two great resources where you know we take guys through all these foundational steps, then we give them tools, and then we take them through, you know, just good old identity change. So it's kind of this three-fold process that builds a, a platform to kind of get up and out of addiction. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to link to all that in the show notes. Thanks thanks again for your time and thanks, all the uh, awesome stuff you're doing for the kingdom. So keep it up. Likewise. All right. Blessings.